Uh, good evening. <coughs> uh, it's now 7 o'clock, and we will call our, to order the meeting of the Planning Board of the Town of Cape Elizabeth, March 23, 2015. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll be saying that a lot tonight. Um, the agenda has the following item items approval of the minutes of the previous meeting a uh, private road review with respect to 413 pulpit rock road a land use amendments uh, consideration uh, available for public comment and um, that is it <coughs> the first order of business is the um, approval of minutes of the last meeting i would the call to the board's attention it has a fresh copy in which the resolution on the hidden court application has been modified just slightly to i think clarify what the intention of the uh, resolution was which was to have some general provisions some specific provisions proposed by elaine fallander without implying that those were the only additional provisions that might be applied. Uh, so that was the purpose of those tweaks to the previous copy that was sent out for consideration. Um, do I hear a motion uh, on the minutes? Motion to approve. A second. Uh, Joe, any, we have an approved motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. <coughs> Excuse me. The next item the, on the agenda is the private road review with respect to 413 Pulpit Rock Road. The procedure will be as follows. Uh, the town planner will introduce the project within the context of local regulations. The applicant will summarize the project. There will be an opportunity for public comment. <coughs> The board will then um, consider the completeness of the application. If it's deemed incomplete, we'll identify what items uh, are necessary to make it complete. <coughs> Excuse me. The board will also consider um, whether a site walk uh, or public hearing will be scheduled. And um, we'll turn now to the town planner for a uh, review of the project. So the Pulpit Rock Road property is in the RA district and there is an existing single family home and multiple accessory dwellings on an existing lot. The lot is, the, remember the RA district is an 80,000 square foot minimum lot size and the lot is proposed to be divided to create a second lot. Um, the two complications are that the abutters, the applicant owns an abutting lot, so a small amount of an abutting lot is being moved into this lot in order to make 80,000 square feet. In addition, the lot is bisected by what is currently a private access way, and you need to have the minimum lot size on one side of the road. So this road is being moved a little bit to the north in order to uh, aggregate at least 80,000 square feet south of the road. The second piece is that um, right now the lots are being accessed by what we call a private access way. And now that this section is going to provide access to two lots, it's being upgraded from a private access way to a private road. So that's really what you've been asked to do tonight is to look at that section that's going from private access way to private road. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Oh, thank you, Marie. The, uh, we'll hear next from a uh, representative of the applicant from uh, Mitchell Associates. Yes, then, uh, yes thank you. Um, my name is, is uh, Michael King, and I'm from uh, Pardon me, sir, do you have a mic on the... Yep. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just a second. And um, I'm trying to get... This is a brand new computer, apparently, and we're trying to get this PowerPoint to work. And it doesn't seem to be working. There you go. 
So I think we're all set here. Um, yeah. So the, uh, thanks again. This is a Pulpit Rock Road, uh, and tax map R02-1 map 9D. The owner is the trust of the Nancy Clark Brewer, and Nancy Clark Brewer is a trust trustee. Uh, the four consultants that worked on this project are Rachel and Associates, uh, who did the site planning, and some consulting did the uh, stormwater. Um, Albert Frick and Associates did the HHE 200, and Survey Inc. did the uh, survey work. Um, let me just back up a bit here and say. Um, Jeez, as I said, that's lot 90 here. That's the that's the site. Pulpit Rock Road starts out here and works way through this property and ends up at this lot right here. Uh, what? Uh, what the brewers are proposing to do is take this portion of, of the lot and 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 uh, and uh, and develop a uh, lot two as shown on on the plans that were sent in. Uh, what I'd like to do first is walk through the site uh, right here. The, this first view is right as you will come onto the site, and as you see, uh, one impro the the most prominent part of the site that you see is these very large trees on both sides of this, as on the road coming in. Uh, this slide here is from here, looking back up up the existing driveway, and and those trees are shown in the background. Uh, this top left slide is from this point right here. And what you see here is a driveway going back to this lot here. That's lot 9D. Uh, and this view here is, I'm sorry, this view here is taken from up the road as well. And I'd like to point out the large trees on both sides of the driveway as well. Uh, this driveway, uh, there, as a, Improved the road in 1999. They uh, there there was an access easement to this lot, a 30 foot wide access access easement, and that was uh, that the existing easement is in the application. As we uh, as this road is turned into a private road, that existing easement will have to have to be updated, and I'll talk about that a bit as we talk about the site plan. Uh, these are, this top view is from lot 9D out this way, and this view here is a view of approximately where, where the new driveway for lot 1 will be coming in. Uh, the first sheet in your package is the existing conditions plan, and I'd like to point, your, point out uh, a couple easements on this. This is the first easement I spoke about. Uh, there's also an existing easement on the existing lot. Uh, it's on the deed. It's called an it's open space easement, and essentially it's a view easement for this lot, for the lot 9D. Uh, the third easement I'd like to discuss is uh, on the lot directly south. Um, I want to make sure I get that's lot uh, 12B. There's an existing 20 foot wide 
PWD easement shown right here for this lot over here. Uh, this, this time I'd like to point out that this lot, 12B, this lot is also owned by the brewers. Uh, the proposed lot is shown here and outlined in purple. Uh, for th this is called lot two in the plans. This is, this is referred to as the lot one, is exi the existing lot. Lot two is ninety three thousand six hundred forty nine square feet, and the proposed private road is shown up here. That will provide us two hundred ninety four feet of road frontage. For lot one, the updated square foot will be 107,224 uh, uh, square feet, and this will be 155 feet of road frontage. Um, this piece of land in here is about 30 feet, 35 feet wide. This piece of land will be uh, taken from lot 12B, which is as I said, it's uh, right now is owned by the brewers. Uh, this piece right here, that, that's the, the proposed private road. Uh, and we have sent, an, sent a draft of the proposed uh, access easement to the to the council of lot 9d we have not gotten comments back but once we get their comments back we'll we'll update the draft of the easement and we will we'll, as we send the plans back into, into the town we'll send up an, uh, the updated easement with that this slide shows a detail of the road um, right through here this is lot two lot one uh, down here is a road cross section and this road it shows the proposed road is 14 feet paved with two foot grass two foot two foot grass gravel shoulders on each sides for a total of 18 feet. Uh, we are going to ask for a waiver of the private road standards and I will uh, talk about that a bit, a bit further at the end of the presentation. Uh, this, piece of the road, this piece of the road up until this point will be uh, pavement, um, uh, pavement. This section back here, this will be concrete pavers. This turnaround section has been designed to the town standards. Uh, and one comment we received back from the from the town engineer, he asked that we he see a WB40 template uh, on on this piece of the road. We have sent that back to the town, and uh, we have not received comments back from that. I have a copy of what we sent into him at the end of this application, if you want to see that. Uh, a few other things I'd like to point out. The, 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 green, the trees in green, those are the existing trees that will stay. Uh, the trees in red here are the trees that will need to come out and be taken down as we do this road improvement. There'll be seven trees that will need to come down. Excuse me. One last item on this sheet I'd like to show. Uh, there are three locations here. That's uh, Rain Garden 1, Rain Garden 2, and Rain Garden 3. Uh, I refer you to, the, to that detail for the rain gardens. This is how we're proposing to treat the stormwater for the road. Uh, and you can see a bit further in this how, how the grades work. Uh, it will catch, catch a, a
portion of, geez, of the stormwater coming off the site in, uh, in, in, in this rain garden, in this one, in this one. Um, at this point, on, on this slide, I'd like to talk about the uh, power, the septic, and the water. Uh, the, the existing power comes into the site to the main house, to, I'm sorry, to the transformer to the main house, and then these two structures uh, the, are fed back from the main house. What we need to do for the power for, for this uh, existing structure and this existing structure is come uh, directly from the transformer to those structures. Uh, since the transformer is on lot one, we will need an easement to get from lot one to lot two. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we have sent in a draft of that easement uh, as part of the uh, package that we sent in March and 2nd. On this, there is an existing septic system here with an existing tank and pump station here. This, this house pumps back to, to that uh, each bed and, and this structure is a tank for this structure here and here and this connects into this existing system. For the proposed lot one what we need to do is a, is a proposed septic system here, and so this uh, tank will now pump up to here, and this geez, existing uh, bed is going to continue to be used for this structure here. Uh, this has a capacity for five rooms, five bedrooms, and this structure has one bedroom, so we, we believe it has a capacity to to take these flows. Um, I'd like to talk about the water system. I know that there's been quite a lot of discussion from the uh, comments that we've gotten back about the water, and I'd like to run through that quickly. Uh, as we first contacted PWD, they asked us to connect to uh, Z the Zeb Cove Road water main, which is, uh, I will show you in the upcoming slides, basically over here, um, and, and it, it would be going all through ledge through two off-site properties. And so we went back to PWD and asked them, since, uh, since the brewers do control the lot to the south, could we connect to the Boat Cove Road water main, which was installed in 2005? And we proposed coming down across lot two, and there's a match line here, uh, coming across uh, the, what we refer to as the Boat Cove lot owned by the brewers, coming down to Boat Cove Road. And let me show you in a bit more detail here. The blue line above is at the Zeb Cove Road water main, and this line here is the Boat Cove Road water main. That's what we're referring to as the proposed lot two. This down here is the Boat Cove lot owned by the brewers. We're proposing to come through that lot owned by the brewers, and there's an, in, there is an existing 30-foot wide uh, PWD, I'm sorry, an existing 30-foot wide easement from this lot to the brewer's lot uh, that was created in, in 2009 and we did send a copy of that easement uh, as part of the package that we sent into the town uh, on March 2nd and uh, so that is how we were how we would propose that access to the Boat Cove Road, Boat Cove Road, eight-inch water main. There would be a uh, in this location a heater pit with a uh, pressure reduction valve inside the pit. Um, I did talk about this at the beginning, and we are proposing a waiver 
of the uh, private road standards and to go from 18 feet down to, um, to go from 22 feet down to 18 feet. And we would ask the board to, to uh, try to take into account the three these items below as we consider it. Uh, we have spoken to Peter Gleason, the fire chief and the town CEO, and we've gone out there and walked the road with them. Uh, Chief Gleason has asked that two trees be taken down along Pulpit Rock Road and so that uh, they can get their equipment down to the end of Pulpit Rock Road. Uh, we, we propose to go down, to go back out there with Chief Gleason once again and flag those trees and have it as a condition of approval that, that those trees be taken down uh, at the time uh, of the proposed road cheese improvements. Um, the geez, other concern about uh, that the road should be designed to have the capacity for a probably be 40 standard, and that has been uh, where the concrete pavers will be installed. That is designed to have the, to meet the standards of a WB40 vehicle. Um, I think as I started this presentation, what I showed were the, were the slides of the existing trees, and that's, that's, the, that's the important thing that we're trying to work here and save those existing trees. It's the first thing you see as you get down to that road. You're, you're struck by how beautiful these trees are. And uh, to take those down, I think, uh, I think everyone uh, would be, um, I think the, the, the thought process would be, if we could save the, the maximum amount of those trees, uh, and still be able to get a fire truck down there. That, is, that was the goal of the design of the road, and that's how it was designed. And, and the last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, the future development. Um, the, this is going to be the last lot on that road because there's uh, those lots of, uh, at the point now where no other lots can be taken out of that piece of land. So there's not going to be other future development of that road. And I think if we, if all three of these items are thought about, that's that what, what, what drove us with the, how we came up with the changing the, the, the road design from 22 feet to 18 feet. And that will conclude this presentation. There's, for a small project, there's quite a bit of information. I tried to squeeze in a lot of, uh, uh, quite a bit of information, but I'd be glad to go through those points if you have any questions. Before we uh, entertain comments from the public, do board members have any questions uh, that would, they'd like to ask now to, that would be a benefit to the public? Yes, I'm sorry, good point, on completeness. Okay, uh, that being the case, we'll now... Yes, I oh, I'm sorry. have one question. Do I understand you properly that, that, properly that there are going to be, that the septic systems for the two lots are going to be completely separated and that there's going to be a new leach field serving the large house and that the small house will be served by the existing leach field? Yes, that's correct. And do we have a perk test for the new leach field? Yes, and that's uh, that is uh, that is part of the documentation that was sent to the sent to the board. So, in addition to the statement that the existing one serves five rooms, what do we know about the new one? The I can check, but I I'm, I think it's been designed for five rooms as well. Okay, perhaps that was in the, the second set of materials. Oh, thank you. It Excuse me, at this point, um, we will open the hearing for any comment by the public. Are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on this application? 
there being none, we'll close the public um, part of the session and uh, now open the discussion uh, between the board and the applicant's representative on the generally on the subject of complete complete the center. Uh, when you build a new section of the road close to the trees that you don't want to take, how, how close will you be? How, how close it, is it going to be? Let me try to go back here. Uh, there are some points uh, down here that, that's a smaller tree, but I think the uh, the the uh, I'm sorry. At these points, we're proposing uh, that where the at this point and this point, and I believe at this point here, that those three trees, we are going to extend the two foot uh, the two foot uh, gravel shoulders to those trees uh, because those three trees, the trunks are three feet off the pavement edge. So... Uh, what are the chances of them surviving? Um, that's a function of the contractor, to be honest. I've, I've done this before, and if it's done with, with care, uh, the important thing, if you get in there and cut the roots, you, you can't just scrape up the roots. You have to get in there, saw, cut the roots back, and then if that's done, if they take the time to do that, their chances of success are much greater. In the package that we received last week via email, there is a hand sketch drawing of the wastewater disposal system. Will that right. be refined or made that, more legible in right. the final that, submission? That was, that's the existing HHE 200 for the existing what's out there now. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you, it's very difficult to read. Okay. I, I, would, I, I haven't spoken to Ben to get his final comments. I suspect what he'll want and what we're be prepared to do is update that HHE 200 so it's for that specific lot and that those specific structures. It was very difficult to read. Just the penmanship on it was difficult. <laughs> I, I agree completely. <laughs> I tried to read it. I mean, I had to read it to get, to get the information on the plans. And I, I struggled as well. Any other, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, had a quite, uh, I was trying to keep track of what I think is yet to come. Excuse the, me? The, the items which I believe, if I understood you correctly, we have yet to receive one is the approval of the easement to the Karoo property. Yes, we sent we sent a draft of that easement to them to to so that their legal counsel could go through it. We haven't gotten their comments back, so uh, we'll we'll need to get their comments back. And as we send the final documents into the town, we'll we'll get that. Okay, easement that's final. one. Number two, did I understand correctly the Fire Chief has yet to approve your drawings for the turnaround? Um, he said that, um, he did ask that it be designed for a, a WB40 uh, vehicle, and we did send in documentation to the town here, and this and this. We sent that to the uh, town engineer. I uh, talked about it in my documentation. I and, and, but you have not had a reply yet, is that correct? We sent that to the town engineer a couple of weeks ago. We haven't got a result. Okay, reply. so that's two. And number three, the, um, there's an easement with respect to the transformer. Is that yet to come? Uh, we, um, right, so the, basically it needs to be just uh, the transformer is right on the lot line. Right. I'm sorry. But it's it's almost all on lot one. A piece of it is on lot two. So it's just so that when the lot, if work is done on lot two, they need to get a trench from lot two to lot one just for that area. 
So they do need access and an easement to allow them to do it. So we did send in a draft of that easement okay. as well. That's uh, three, and then number four is the verification with the fire chief of which trees he wants removed in connection with the turnaround. I, I'm, I'm just I'm right. No, that's that's um, he he and John from my office, John. Rachel walked the site, and he uh, and Chief Gleason did point out two trees. John wasn't sure; he couldn't remember which one they were. We don't, we don't actually have the survey that goes down that far. I can show you approximately where they are. But what we'd like to do is get the chief back out here, or to get to actually flag, put tape around the trees, that they'd be down this area of the road. Mike, if I could just make it clear. The two trees that still need to be identified are not in the turnaround area. They're between no. the lot and the they're, house they're road. down they're here. They're along, they're along like, Pulpit Rock Road, the portion that you're not reviewing. Um, but the town engineers recommended that at least a note be added to the plan that says certain trees will be removed in that area. Right. And these are minor items to be sure, but I just wanted to, uh, by my count, there are four relatively minor right. documentation and decisions that we have to yet have before us, right? Right. Okay. Yes, Elaine. Um, one comment on the transformer, since it straddles the lot line, it seems to me that it needs, that lot one needs a transformer easement too, also, that that has to be a cross easement if the transformer is straddling the line. Uh, but that's no. That's 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 probably correct. I, I, the, how the tra how transformers typically work is for the uh, as the power comes as as the conduits come in and out of them. They, they typically only come in and out of one side. Right. So the the trenches will only be on this side. So the, so the work. With just the back of the, basically the back of the concrete pad on lot two, they, lot one shouldn't need anything, but I. I what if they had to lift off the top no, of the transformer to right. get inside? Yep. It seems to me that it needs to be completely separated and run both ways. Right, that's a good point, and we can uh, adjust that easement so that. The other question I had can you explain, do we still need a water line easement or? Is that now all set in well, grade Well, we, we included that because... Uh, For lot two. I see where it's supposed to go. Do we actually have that resolved? Or is that an outstanding item two? Uh, there's, there's quite a few easements with regard to the water. So I'd like to ask you, which specific one are you referring to? Okay, so I have two questions about the water. First of all, What's the water situation for lot two when this right. is complete? And what's the water situation for lot one when this is complete? The, for lot two, I'm sorry, let me. The water is gonna come off of. Um, it will come off of this existing structure through the lot to the south, uh, which is owned by the brewers. But it, does it continue to the adjacent lot that here is um, trustees of the family trust, Rosemary, Banami, and HM? Yes. So and do we need an easement from them too? They're, they're in the documentation that we sent into the town on uh, March 2nd. Is that the, the not, not the application, but the supplemental information? March 18th, you mean March the second 18th. piece? Yes. Yeah. Um, in that package, there, there's an existing easement shown in red here. And yeah. we sent in that, we sent in an easement in that package. And that's sufficient to serve a new, to allow this to and, happen? And that's, that's enough for this piece. What will happen for this is there'll be an, an easement from, uh, from the brewers to the brewers. And we sent in a draft of that easement as well. So you've concluded that you don't need anything else from the 
other property to allow the easement to be extended to yet a third property? I'll, uh, I'll see how that extension will work with okay. our council. I, no, that's, we'll, we'll resolve that. And then what is, how does the existing large house end up, where is it water coming from? That will stay where it is. Right now it comes, it comes down the driveway and to the back of the house. Okay, so you're sort of cutting off whatever presently connects the two. Right. Well, what's, what's happening right now is this, this existing uh, service comes down and serves this house. These two, back, these two structures are then fed from this house back. And that water line is going to be removed? And that line will be taken out. And we will need to add notes to the plan to, to okay. that to that end. So this, this scheme assumes the boat cove um, hook into the public water? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yes, Carolyn. So do you have a definitive list of easements that, that uh, need to be yet to be completed? We've talked about many. <laughs> yes. Uh, we in the app in the application we did outline what was had to be proposed I, right. since the, that since we've added changed yes we've things. added uh the easement for the transformer and the easement uh for the proposed water service through boat cove the the boat cove lot and i have another comment um the road maintenance agreement, the fire chief made a comment in his note that he would like to see language that requires that the 14 foot width be maintained year round, which to me doesn't only speak to tree trimming, but snow removal as well. So I don't know if they factored that in. I, I could be over interpreting, but. No, oh, actually he. Yes, ma'am. In my opinion, the, our model road maintenance agreement does require that. Okay. I believe it speaks to the paved surface and the shoulders. The whole thing has to be okay. uh, kept flat. One more question. Am I correct that there is going to be a conveyance of property from Nancy Clark Brewer to Nancy Clark Brewer, trustee of the Revocable Trust, in order to complete the outline of Lot 2? Yes, that's correct. And is that one of the deeds we have? Uh, that won't be part of the deed descriptions that we have not sent in yet, but yes. Okay, so that that's, would. if that's part of the described lot, we would need that deed too as part of our package because otherwise yeah. the applicant wouldn't have the right to the entire property. Right. Any other questions or comments? Sure. Your question. Um, one of the basis is for the uh, waiver for the travel what travel way with is that pulpit rock road is an 18 foot travel way all the way up to i believe um cold ocean house road is that something that has been verified uh, that that existing road is not 18 feet wide no uh past 18 foot travel the 14 feet The, uh, if we are talking about down here and how the road extends out to Old Ocean House Road, that road gets down to 12, feet, 12 to 14 feet in some locations. Uh, and, and with that being the case, we didn't, and if you drive through that road, it's a, it's a beautiful old road. It has very nice character. And to that end, we didn't. We thought that if we created a 22-foot wide, wide road at the end of this to serve basically two lots, it didn't 
the, the character of that section of the road wouldn't match that existing culvert. Right? So that's that's why we're proposing the waiver. Any other, uh, Victoria? Yeah, quick question while we're talking about all these easements. Um, I was looking at your exhibit E, and you refer to that, and it is an easement D, and it said um, further described and attached exhibit A. Is that something that will be coming to us, this exhibit A, or is that? We haven't written the the, 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 the lot description yet in case we got to this point when we started to change lot lines. Uh, once we get to the point where we're quite sure that lot, lot lines aren't going to change, then we'll write the deed, deed descriptions and we'll attach them to the proposed easements. Thank you. Yeah. Peter, I have one more. Hmm? Sorry. Um, this is all premised on the fact that this uh, new part of the roadway will never serve another lot. Is that enshrined in one of the agreements existing? Because it seems to me that it would be completely possible that the owner of the Bruce Duvall Bent Revocable Trust might want to get a little spur off that road, too. Um. And is that something that could be included I, I don't think he has rights to Pulpit Rock Road. He wouldn't have right to it, but would there, is there something that would preclude that right being given? I mean, if we're approving one more lot at the end of a substandard road, um, it, it just looks like another possible Wouldn't request. Would the board have to approve that? It would, but this applicant is stating quite definitively that there shall be no additional thoughts. That was on the lower road. Would there be any problem in, in putting on note, a note on the plan to the effect? That yeah, that's, that's fine. I, <coughs> would that, okay. Yeah, I, I have the same, happy to put a note on the plan. Uh, same reaction. Yes. Okay. okay, I'm just going to, I'm asking this question for clarification based on Elaine's previous question. So what, what our applicant, the current applicant is saying is the section of Pulpit Rock Road, which is on these properties, will serve no other, other lot. That's correct. Because she can't say that about the rest of it. That's true. I, uh, that's or true. The, can uh, they? I'm, the, or can um, they? I guess what we're trying to say is, is the proposed private road, which is this section here, that's all, that no fu future loss will have access to that. What happens on the, from, from, from this point down to okay. his old ocean house world, we can't control that, and we don't. Uh, I, I, and I guess if I if I tried to say that, if it came across that way, that's not what I meant. No, I just wanted right. to make sure I understood correctly. Yeah. So, all right. Be quick. Uh, I'm a little confused on looking at L1 here and L2 that was presented to us. There was a question about the width of the road after it left this what was the private access way. And right there on this map, it almost appears as if the width of the road is a continuous uh, travel way of 18. But when I look at L2 and the package that was provided to us, it looks like it gets down to 10 feet wide. So why is that map not matching up with L2 here? This is, map, I mean, is this the latest, and, and so it, it overrides? No, this no. Filter? This, what's shown on the screen, and what you have in your documents are the same. It's the same information. It hasn't changed at all. Uh, so this is so this plan. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that, yeah. You can. So go this to and this, they're the same thing. Uh, 
with what's you know what's what's shown in here. That that road is 14 feet wide, with two foot wide gravel shoulders. And right before it gets to the property of Martin. Right here. How wide is that? Uh, at that point, that's 12 feet wide. That is 12. It's not 10. I can. Uh, I'll have to check it off the top of my head. I don't so it think. does go from 14 yes. to at least 12, and I am questioning on whether it's 10. So if okay. that could be when it's submitted back to us, if that width could just be added to the map. So, so how, how wide the existing road is. How wide okay. is the existing road. And yep. we'll while we're speaking of that, the portion up there of that road that you call L3, you know where L3 is? Yep. Okay, the portion of L3. So you have the um, turnaround that's going to be in uh, pavers. Yep, here. And then you have a section that is called L3. What's the width of L3? It's, once again, we're talking width, and L3 doesn't have a width. That, that road is... That's, yeah. But that's L... That is that's that's L3 and that's 14. Oh, where was wide. L3? I'm sorry. Where was yeah, it? Yeah, that's L3. That is L3. Okay. I'm looking at um, submission. It's B about the WB40 turnaround template. Right. So I'm looking at that and I'm just pulling the arrows down. There's there's an this. L2. There's a C2. There's an L3. Yeah, L3. Yep. Right there. What's the width of L3? That's the, that's the existing driveway, and uh, off the top of my head, I would guess between 10 and 12 feet wide. I'm thinking 10. Does it connect to a, um, a brick pavers? I think when it goes on to the property lot on 9D, it does turn into pavers. Right, so I'm thinking in that, and that's a 10, that's 10 feet. Those brick pavers are 10. So it looks like L3 is matching up to those brick pavers. If you had a bigger picture, you would, and so if you could come back and tell us how wide L3 is, because it, I'm thinking it's 10. Oh, but you will confirm sorry. that. And then the section that has known label. Oops. I'm sorry, I lost to it. <laughs> I might need Morning your help now. here. <laughs> you lost his pictures. What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, possibly. Well, Victoria, shall we keep this thing moving? Maybe you could show my on your. Uh, well, if you out, have, you, like you have the package. Yes. You have this package. I do. Okay. Near the end, it's labeled a giant B down at the bottom. Right. Okay, we're both looking at it together then? Yeah. All right. You can see the L2. You can see the C2. You can see the L3. Right. So you've told me you're going to get back to me on the width of the L3. Because yes. I'm thinking it's 10. 
And can you also tell me when the brick pavers start on the Brewer property? The brick pavers? Just, just uh, yeah, when yeah, did they start? They start here, and they, they, they stop right after the 22. Okay, so those are all proposed or current? Proposed. How about the current brick pavers that go into L3? If you could just, I'm wondering why okay. you're keeping this at 10. And the section that's not well, labeled, it's 50 feet. You, you know, I'm, you're coming off right. a, a very wide area, and then you're bringing it down to 10. We're, right. We're keeping, we're trying to keep that existing driveway, because that goes to her private driveway off the site. Mm -hmm. she, I know that she was very concerned about this project, and she doesn't, she, she asked us to keep everything as small as possible to have the least impact as possible. So the idea was if we could go from the, her, the proposed concrete pavers and uh, go back into the existing driveway as quickly as possible. Driveway being gravel, asphalt? The, her paved driveway. A paved I thought she also had concrete pavers. The Karoo property. It does. So into, right. So it's to, into concrete her, pavers to concrete pavers. Right, so I her, didn't understand. To, re, to, to reconnect to her concrete paver driveway as quickly as possible was is her desire. So because the Karoo property's driveway is ten. Right. At the very start. I mean, if you're looking at L two, you'll see that. All of that turnaround is there, that's concrete pavers, right. and now this person's proposing, Brew is proposing concrete pavers, and so you have this section that goes down to ten. I believe it's ten, but it's not labeled. But you're going to label it, label. and I'm just trying to figure out it's going down to ten so that it's it can meet up with her ten foot. Right. Because that's why you're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, her driveway, <coughs> where we stop the work, and where her driveway starts, it's that line right to the left of, uh, of the L3. Of L3. There's a note that says match existing driveway. So that's why we're, we're, we're doing that, that transition. Okay, right, because I know those pavers came from Carew's property onto Brewer's property. That was okay. part of the 1999 access way. So, okay, okay. it's just, it's not like well, well, as we resubmit, we'll add additional notes, we'll note how wide it is at that point as well as on the other end of the driveway. And then, and right, on the, the other end that, right. where it goes into Martin, yep. you're going to also label that because, yes. yeah, because that looks like 10, once again, based on the 1999 access way, okay. uh, unless they went back and built it larger, which maybe they did. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. It's not we'll, labeled. Uh, we'll, we'll add notes and we'll, we'll clarify that. Okay, but I just also wanted the board to know that you, you got this larger and sandwich between two tens. Right. All right. Thank okay, you. Are we all set from the members of the board with questions for Mike? <coughs> uh, that being the case, I think we should now consider what we do next. Um, we obviously have a list of items which are relatively minor in nature, but yet to be uh, completed. We can either make a determination of completeness or that it's incomplete, uh, obviously referring to the items that we have yet to see and um, put the matter off until the April 27 meeting, at which point I suppose we could make a final vote of completeness and go on to the substantive application as well. Yep. Um, any thoughts from the board on how to proceed? Caroline. I'm rather concerned about the number of easements that are outstanding and if I had some level of comfort that they were all in process and exactly which ones they are that we're looking for, it would help, you know, help me make a decision. My own thinking is for the sake of efficiency that we could in, in fact uh, deem it incomplete. Uh, referring to this list of items that we've discussed, which I think are indeed minor, and then take the completeness up 
followed by substance at the April 27 meeting. Does that appeal to a other members? It seems a reasonable compromise. Okay. Um, is somebody willing to produce a motion to that effect? Okay, can I ask just a quick question sure. about that? So if we go right into the substantive discussion, would we try to vote on it that, at that meeting? I mean, is that... We could, yeah. I mean, we so would certainly... We're essentially have... skipping the site one. Well, uh, you know, you make a good point. I, I did want to ask whether the board felt a site walk was in order. Does anybody wish to have a site walk? I think there's an order. Yes, I hope. Okay. Elaine, Caroline? I could go either way. Yeah, I could too. I, I'm not sure it's completely necessary. I can go either way only because of the fire chief's comments that um, reducing it from our standards to 14 is, you know, approved by him. I mean, it would be helpful for us as a board to see <coughs> to see it and understand why the fire chief sure. thinks that's okay. Well, we can we can have our site walk and still stick to that schedule between now and April 27. We can have our site walk, and if if all the stars are in alignment, we could do completeness and substance at a, on the April 27th meeting if we chose to. Yes. That being the case, why don't we talk about a date for the site walk and then we'll do the resolution. Um, Maureen, what's the submission date for the next? The submission deadline for the April meeting is, I believe, April 3rd. Ooh, for the April meeting? For the planning right. board meeting? It's just, it's the way it works out. Hmm. Um, the regular, the third Tuesday of the month is April 21st. And if you count back 18 days, that's April 3rd. Wow. Even though our meeting is, in fact, not that day. Correct, because when, whenever you move the meeting, I hold all the submission deadlines and you get the package early. Um, it just, it's, it's a cleaner way to deal with it and also it helps me with a staff that's already processing other applications. I don't want them doing yours and another boards at the same time. Well, this coming Saturday, um, Woodwork, uh, within that schedule. No, so that would be the 28th. 28th. Is that work for folks? Fine with me. Early. It early? works for me. Yeah, early. Um, what's early has been sort of nine. Eight or, is eight or eight? Or eight. I can oh. make eight. What's the weather going to be like? It's, it's going to be cold. Not gonna be cold. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <We're> about nine. <laughs> um, does eight o'clock work for everybody? Okay. Uh, oh eight hundred Saturday, April twenty eighth. Or site walk. March twenty eighth. Um, excuse me. You're still in Hawaii? <laughs> Different time zone. March 28th at uh, 8 o'clock, the site walk. And where are you going to meet right in front of this property? Yeah, Mike, what, you or one of your folks going to be there? Yeah, okay. Is it going to be okay if the planning board it's parks around the circle? If what? Is it going to be all right if the planning board members park around the circle of the house, of the Brewer House at Pulpit Rock Road? Yep. There's not really a lot of places to park. Yes. So you just drive to the end and work your way around the circle. Oh, this circle. Okay. Okay. <coughs> You're going to be sending out. Uh... Yes, I will do. I will send out a notice. Would one of the board members like to make a motion for the board to consider? Sure, I'll make a motion. Oh, that's right. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nancy Clark Brewer, trustees of the Nancy Clark Brewer Revocable Trust, to upgrade a private access way to a private road in order to establish frontage for a new location, lot located next to 413 Pulpit Rock Road, be deemed incomplete. Second. There's a second piece to that order about the uh, 
tabled to the April 27 meeting. Okay, and then be it ordered that the above application be tabled to April 27, 2015 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Uh, can I make a can I make a request that mm -hmm. you not do the second one? Oh, oh okay. Because mm -hmm. it's deemed incomplete. That means the applicant can automatically resubmit for the April meeting. And I understand from your discussions that if the applicant does submit, that you want me to also advertise a public hearing at that that evening. Yes. So I would, if you, I wouldn't do the second the second motion because okay. if for some reason nobody second that motion. Okay. Nobody's because we hadn't voted on the previous one yet. <laughs> well, we had a second on the previous, so we haven't voted yet. Who was the, who was the second on the Me. first? Thank you. Okay, your second was on the first part um, of yes. the motion made. Okay, any discussion on the motion which has been seconded? All in favor? All opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Um, it might even be in touch with Maureen if you have any questions in the interim and make sure that Okay. All, all matters are being looked at. Very good. Thank you. Okay. This um, next item in the agenda is the land use amendments. <clears throat> the town council has referred to the planning board the fifth package of amendments known as the land use amendments to implement several recommendations predominantly from the land use chapter of the comprehensive plan, section 1910.3. <coughs> and there will be a public hearing uh, on this matter. May I ask if there, are you sir here? Okay, good, thank you. There was somebody else who was here and they may have left. There were two people. Yes, uh, uh, sir, I wonder if you do, you do you want me to do a summary? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think what we'll do this as follows. The town planner will do a summary of the um, amendments which have been proposed. And um, we will then open the hearing for comments by members of the public. Uh, when that hearing is closed, the board will then have a further discussion on the amendments and the memorandum uh, and now in draft form to the town council to um, discharge our assignment by the town council. So Maureen, you know, if you could. And you know, I will make this very, very brief. And if people have questions, feel free to um, ask me those questions after I'm done. Uh, these amendments are the product of the last package of amendments from the comprehensive plan. As we noted at the last meeting, the comprehensive plan was a very extensive process. It was a two-year process. It was created by a committee that had a range of community perspectives. There were five packages of ordinance amendments that came out of the uh, high priority recommendations in the comprehensive plan. The other four sets have been, rec have been adopted, and this is the last big high priority set. Mashed into it are recommendations from the future open space preservation committee. Uh, the comprehensive plan has uh, some significant recommendations that talk about preparing the town for changes in demographics. And these recommendations do look very hard at the change in town demographics where we are having a growing senior population and that seniors who are looking to transition out of single family homes don't have a lot of options in Cape Elizabeth. And then finally, uh, these amendments do incorporate into them some incentives to address public benefits that the town has identified that it wants, specifically uh, preserving open space, preserving agricultural lands, preserving sensitive environmental areas. So the draft you have in front of you, I did do the a draft cover memo to the town council and you've seen this in certain uh, forms. This is the final form, so if there are any changes you want to make to that, uh, please do so. It identifies every single recommendation in the comprehensive plan or from FOSP. It identifies what the planning board's recommendation is for that. In most cases, you've recommended making changes, and the ordinance package here includes changes to the subdivision ordinance, mostly to the zoning ordinance. And at the very end, not included technically in the land use amendment 
amendments recommendations from the council but incorporated into this package are two separate amendments one is just a cleanup uh, referencing that was done from the subdivision ordinance you changed some of the sites for uh, public notice and public hearing and so those reference numbers in the zoning ordinance have been amended to reflect what the subdivision ordinance changes were and then there's also a recommendation in here to add a clarifying amendment for non-conforming lots that do not have sufficient frontage code enforcement officer has asked for some clarifying language our town attorney has reviewed the proposal in front of you there is two things I do want to suggest on page four of the memo um, I believe that under uh, item 82 where it talks about implementation I should also include the new provision that the board is recommending that one bedroom units be counted as 0.5 units of density and two bedroom units be counted as 0.66 units of density so uh, unless you're telling me not to do that I'm going to add that in as just one more bit of description um, the last piece is on page 14 I was reviewing this again this afternoon and I'm recommending that on line 14 it says at least 45 and the word percent should be inserted in there as well as the numerical 45 percent which is already there so I I consider that just a very minor change so unless there are other other changes I'm gonna stop there are there any comments by the board uh, questions to Maureen before we open the public session of this uh, agenda item okay there being none uh, sir thank you for your patience if you would uh, give us your name and your address please for the record uh, you have by the formal rules three minutes considering the uh, not a long line behind you if you want to go over that a bit that will be fine hopefully I'll keep it under three uh, my name is Chris straw 597 Shore Road um, despite the lack of attendance tonight thank you very much for all your hard work it does go appreciated by some of us in town and there's a lot of changes I've had just a, a little bit of time to review some of them but most of them look pretty good to me uh, there are some I disagree with, but they are in keeping with the comprehensive plan, so I'm not really going to touch on those. Um, hopefully you have your draft uh, changes in front of you. I'm going to try to point to some page numbers to reference uh, the three areas I want to touch on. Number one is on page 12 of the draft changes. There's a section that deals with the resource protection district. As you know, that's the area with critical wetlands and whatnot. Um, between lines 16 and 17, there's the phrase multi-unit residential. This is the list of what uses are not permitted in the resource protection districts. I would just point out that the term multi-unit residential, as near as I can tell, is not actually defined anywhere in the zoning ordinance, so you should change that language to capture what I think you intended to have there. So I just wanted to flag that for you. Um, page 12, uh, this gets to the ones I have more of an issue with. Um, if you flip to page 12, it talks about the open space zoning. Uh, before, if you look at line 32, it, uh, the planning board reviewed residential subdivisions, now it's switched to residential developments. So it's expanded out the scope of what you're, you'll have the ability to review and uh, basically provide waivers. Uh, you'll note that also the line saying that you can increase the setbacks has been changed to say changing setbacks, which implies that you have the ability to decrease the setbacks below what the restrictions are for those, those areas. So I, I would question whether that's what you actually intended and think long and hard about that because you have that last sentence in that paragraph, which implies that you're not in any way granting a variance. But if you're not granting a variance, how, how do you have the ability to decrease the setbacks below what otherwise are the... Uh, the uh, required setbacks and how does that play out with the zoning board of uh, appeals um, I would be very concerned if what the intent here was was to allow the planning board to say oh we're gonna have a two-foot setback in this development I don't think that's what it's intended but that's how it reads to me so I just wanted to call that to your attention and then finally I just wanted to touch on um, what's near and dear to my heart the what's called the North Shore area the uh, RC district up near the cookie jar uh, I looked at the changes primarily with uh, these open space zoning and the larger multi-unit uh, buildings and identified some of the lots that this would apply to. Uh, one is on the end of Cottage Farms Road. Um, it's a four acre plus lot. Uh, my understanding is that's under a resource protection district zone so that it, uh, multi-unit building will not be permitted to go in there. That said, there are two lots at the back of Stony Brook. 
those two lots are each over three acres in size. If you look at, uh, I believe one is um, 3.4 acres, the other is 3.5 acres. So that's 6.9 acres in total. Right now under the existing ordinance, because each is less than five, five acres, all you can put there are two uh, single family homes. So right now there's two homes that can be built at the back of Stony Brook. With this change, you've now said multi-unit buildings can come in if the size of the lot is three acres or higher. So now multi-unit buildings will be allowed on those two lots. So at 6.9 acres, that's approximately 300,000 square feet. At 15,000 feet per unit, that means these changes will permit 20 units to be built in the back of Stony Brook. That, if you look at the ordinance, please, if I have this wrong in any way, shape, or form, correct me. I, I really hope I have this wrong. So 20 units are allowed in the back of Stony Brook under this change. If the units are under 750 square feet, as which is touched on with uh, the fact that that would be considered, and it was one bedroom, those would only be half units uh, for the calculation. So now we're talking 40 units at the back of Stony Brook under this ordinance. And again, if I have any of this wrong, please correct me. So you're opening up the back of Stony Brook to 40 units, but that's not all, because also you can get a density bonus if they set aside open space all the way on the other side of town. That's a 30% bonus on top of that. So now 30% of 40 is 12 more units. So that means 52 units will be permitted to be put in at the back of Stony Brook, unless I have this wrong. And again, if I have it wrong, please correct me. So looking at that, basically, we see that there is potentially 50 plus unit future development at the back of Stony Brook. And again, I'm looking at the ordinance, I'm stepping through it, explain how I have read any one of these provisions wrong. And on top of that, page 22, the height restrictions are also going to be waived if this is in any way targeted at uh, elderly or uh, older, older folks, such that it can be a 50-foot 50, 50 building. So I just wonder whether that, A, whether the lot size should be up to perhaps to maybe 3.5 acres as what would be required for multi-unit building instead of just three, or otherwise, at least with the height requirement, put in some type of restriction to make it compatible with the surrounding area. Because my reading of the ordinance is that basically you can put in a 50-foot high building, multi-unit building next to single-family homes, and there's no requirement that the height be compatible with the, the neighboring buildings. I didn't see any teeth for that, any provision along those lines in the ordinance. So in short, my concern are the two lots at the back of Stony Brook. Um, I don't think that was intent, what was intended under the comprehensive plan and the language about giving this bonus, we're only gonna count 700, and, uh, last point, the 750 square feet as a half unit. I didn't see any support for that anywhere in the comprehensive plan. I think that goes beyond what was contemplated with your changes. But all in all, I applaud you for your work and your, all your hard work on this. I think you did, did a good job on, on, on the proposed changes otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your comments. And also, please feel free to submit anything you want in writing. Uh, that's another way to bring things before the board's attention. Um, yeah, uh, while the public hearing is still open. Oh, is it still open? Okay. Well, it is. For, yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm assuming the other person won't be back, so there being no other members of the public present, we will close the public portion of the uh, hearing. And now, um, open a board discussion on the comments this gentleman has made. Any other comments about the uh, memorandum and so forth? Victoria. Thank you. Um, the example that you gave on Cottage Farms Road, it's a five acre lot that sits at the end. And I live next door. I also live one house lot away from the eight unit condos. I also live two housing Look, property lots away from the eight three-story apartment buildings. I have no idea how many units are in that. It possibly could be 20, could be 40, it could be 52. What I will tell you about my neighborhood where I live near condos and I live near a very large apartment complex is I love my neighborhood. It's diversified. I see people of all ages. I see people of different family sets being a single person, young people, older people, single parents. I see it all. They're quiet. It's an apartment. Nobody goes outside in their backyard and is cooking or there's, it's just, it's quiet. It's, it's very peaceful. And we have sidewalks over there. We have open space over there, over with Mr. Fristacci. It's a wonderful neighborhood. 
I would tell the people of Stony Brook, please do not let it scare you that there's the possibility that there could be 20 units of, if it's one bedroom, maybe 40 units of elderly people living on your street. I'm sure it will not cause any problems. You can come over to Cottage Farms, you can take a look at the apartments there, pull police records. I mean, it's wonderful living in such a diverse area. Um, and, and, and all of Cottage Farms, we have very large homes, we have very modest homes, and once again, the diversity makes it a great neighborhood. So, when I was thinking about this policy of using um, one bedroom is only half, I was thinking of the diversity that we could possibly bring into a different type of housing choice, because not everyone wants to live in what probably you and I live in is a typical sing you know, family home. There's different definitions of family. And I would welcome that if my folks couldn't do their driveway anymore, which actually they can't because I'm shoveling that driveway. If they can't mow anymore, which actually my son mows, I mean, if, that they could live close by, that I don't have to see them go off to Falmouth or Scarborough, that they could live close by, because they actually do live close by. And if my son came back to live in Portland, and he wanted to live in, not within the downtown, but somewhere outside where it's maybe a little bit more affordable. He could. I think this is very exciting, and, and I don't see it as anything to be concerned about in such a way that you're possibly would scare anyone about the concept of 52 units and how tall would this. I would just take it down a notch because we have design standards. We have thought about incorporating such things that would keep it from looking like actually the house that lives next door to me, a single a family home, boom, boom, box, three stories high. The, this will look, be much more attractive than the house next door to me. So I'm very excited about that whole, and I, I'm glad we're getting rid of what I always deem as regulatory barriers. Why should it be a larger lot? Does it go to health? Does it go to safety? Um, I think you're trying to make it go to the general welfare. And my argument would be, it benefits the general welfare. I, I would be glad to see more of our family members moving into different housing choices. So I, I just wanted to respond to that comment. And, and I also want to say, I'm very excited about finally giving this land use zoning amendment back to the council. Um, we've already heard some of the highlights tonight, but um, when I went through the whole thing, my highlights was the emphasis that is placed on, as Maureen said, permanent legal protection and preservation of open space, agricultural lands, and sensitive environmental areas. And as I've just mentioned, the review of these regulatory barriers that have re been revamped to promote the diversified housing that will allow, for example, our seniors and young people to remain in the community and have homes as they transition through their housing choices. And the last one is the implementation of the design standards for housing containing two units or more. That will now include more open space preservation, architectural standards, site design standards, and incentives to permanently preserve agricultural land. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Victoria. Um, any other? Caroline? I'll just make one comment in response to um, our our lone speaker, and that is if you're looking at a five acre lot, um, you also have to take into consideration, or a three acre lot, that to do multiplex housing, you must set aside 45% of it as open space. So you can't put 40 units on it because you don't have that enough, enough space, so, necessarily. Uh, Elaine. And the other thing I would draw your attention to, and I quite frankly couldn't follow your calculations sufficiently to determine, to kind of go through them, but on page 22, there are limitations to the density bonuses. So although you could combine them, you can't exceed 30% of the density that you otherwise could have, even if you combine them all together. So that is a limitation. And also there are side yard and rear yard 
setbacks that relate to the building height so that as the building goes higher, the setbacks do get more generous. And so I think that also tends to um, put it back. Whether that affects the calculations you made or not, I can't respond to that. Can I add one, one other thing is that a site plan review would include uh, analysis of vehicle traffic. And you know, what you're talking, the, the lots that you're talking about are way in the top of a neighborhood served by fairly small roads. And it's hard to believe that that wouldn't be a major factor in a site plan review of something in that neighborhood. Yeah, I add to that. I, I live in Stony Brook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 we, I take your point, uh, and when you look at these things and you project to the, the ultimate usage, sometimes there is cause con for, uh, for concern. The, those particular parcels, I don't believe, would lend themselves to that kind of a development anyway. But th what we've tried to create here are tools for developers to use subject to some fairly rigorous oversight by the planning board so that the multiplex housing that is put up will be, will look good, will fit the lot, will fit the neighborhood, <clears throat> and provide the diversity of, of uh, people that we think is important. This is, this is not some effort to increase the population of Cape Elizabeth <laughs> by a large factor. Uh, but, but, you know, thank you for raising the point, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly worth considering. Henry. Yeah, I just want to like dwell on one, thank you, dwell on one section. To a developer, you've also got to look at the financial and the desirability of the area. <clears throat> if you put up this huge 50, 50 unit, would it be sale, saleable very easily at the prices? You know, people would people come to Cape Elizabeth because of that? I think that you have to stay within the style of Cape Elizabeth, but but also Cape Elizabeth is expanding too widely. So being able to go up a little bit more, add some more open space, because what in effect you're doing is you're adding elevation and taking it away from the base, will add to the lightness of the of the area, and I don't think it would look over overpopulated um, and so I, I think it will preserve preserve the style of Cape Elizabeth and offer in some degree uh, more affordable housing for elderly people for example I'm thinking of giving up a, a large house and moving to something smaller um, look around Cape Elizabeth there's only one or two little areas that would be suitable maybe if there are a couple more multiplexes it would be would be more suitable for a, an aging family or an aging couple like us. So I think to a degree it would be financially, and also to Cape Elizabeth it would be financially advisable because they'd have more people possibly, increase the population or they'll increase the tax base a bit more. Victoria. Um, I, a question for Maureen about Chris's um, pointing out online um, between line 16 and 17 about the use of uh, multi-unit. What page in terms? So that would be 12. 12. It was 12. Do we use the term multi-unit and should it be changed to multiplex? Well, remember, this is a section that was written in 1990. So it's only here so that because people had questions, there was never any proposal to change this section. We now have two terms that we use. We use multiplex and multifamily unit. And this one isn't either one of those. <laughs> so it would be fairly easy if you direct me that I can put both of the terms we currently use and replace multi-unit residential with the actual terms we now use. I would be in favor of that. Okay. And I'm not sure if the board had any about any of the other recommend the points that were made by Mr. Starr, in regards to any other changes. On the changing of setbacks, increasing. I don't know if anyone, I mean, I, I picked up on that one, and, and I think it's a good change. I'm glad we're making it. But was there anything else the board? 
Well, we talked about that at the last uh, yes, you did. workshop. And could you refresh our memory as to what we? Well, you know, this, this section, it's actually it's kind of an interesting section because under state law, up until a few years ago, um, planning boards had no authority to change setbacks in ordinances. But it was routinely practiced throughout the state or any town that had cluster development provisions, they would always convey to the planning board the opportunity to adjust setbacks. Because the idea of clustering is you want to put the development in one part of the land and you want to save the rest of it. And they wanted to provide towns with a little bit of flexibility on those setbacks. Well, we were tooling along quite nicely with that until someone um, took it to court. And the, and the court legitimately decided that if you are allowing changes in setbacks under state law, that's a variance, you have to go to the zoning board. However, uh, following that court decision, there was a change in state law. And I know there was a change in state law because I helped move that along. Um, so now, if you look at the criteria under state law for changing setbacks, there are some exemptions. It says that you have to go to the zoning board for a variance, except if you're doing it to promote uh, cluster development or dealing with frontage for non-conforming lots. <clears throat> so you can still do this. And it's, it's very, very common practice for towns all over the state that are using cluster development as one of their methods to preserve open space. So does that answer your question? Been a little too much. And the changes do have to be in accordance with the standards of the. Yes, so it's, absolutely. It's, it's not a blank check. No, it is not. Because it does say to permit innovative approaches to housing and environmental design. So if someone is saying, I want to change the setbacks because I want to squeeze more lots in or more units in, the board would have to decide well, is that being innovative or is it circumventing the provisions of the ordinance? Any further uh, comments, discussion? No, but I appreciate that. Thank you. I believe then what we would want to think about doing is a is. Um, do you typically need to do an actual vote? Or is the consensus? Nope. Uh, uh, well, motion. If Page for seven. the changes, you you can do a vote by consensus. Yes, yeah. uh, yeah. but this this text as change by our discussion this evening is what we're now talking about. If someone were to, for example, if someone were to go to the memo to page seven, where it has a motion at the bottom, and you were to say, be it ordered that the land use amendments as amended or as revised tonight. Yes. And I'm assuming that the amendments are the, the multi-unit definition, um, the percent in, in the text, and you're okay with my addition to the cover memo. Thank you. I lost track of the fact we had a nice motion already to do. Yeah, I kind of hit it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so we say the land use amendments adding as amended by consent yeah. at, the, at this hearing. Would somebody like to uh, make a motion to that effect? Carol Ann, thank you. Be it ordered that based on the material submitted and the facts presented, the planning board recommends the land use amendments as revised by consent on March 23rd to the, to the town council for consideration. Is there a second? We have a motion that has been seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Okay, that matter is now completed. Sir, thank you very much for your patience and your thoughts. Um, there's an agenda item. Oh, that public comment you had in mind was for the land use amendment. No, it's just your general oh, public comment general. of yeah. anything. Well, there being no members of the public left in the room, we'll open and close that public comment period. Uh, I believe we're done. Does the board have any other items they'd like to discuss? Okay, just a reminder, site 
viewing Saturday, 8 o'clock at Pulpit Rock. And I'll send a notice out. Okay. That, uh, there'll, that'll also be for anyone who's listening. That'll also be on the town calendar, the meetings calendar on the town's website. Motion to adjourn. Motion we adjourn. Second. Second. In favor? Unanimous, we're not. <laughs> <laughs>